qualitative data analysis differs from quantitative data analysis. So when you do qualitative analysis, the key problem is that it is more of an artistic challenge than an engineering challenge. So in quantitative research, when you want to make a causal claim after you have collected your data on your association, on your contravariables, then you simply apply a regression analysis or one of its variants. Then the choice of which variant to apply and how to do it basically boils down to understanding what these different variants do and then being able to execute that on a computer. So it's basically an engineering problem. So you have a well-defined analysis problem, you have a set of tools and then you need to understand what those tools do and be able to use those tools. Then you pick the right tool and you apply the tool according to the instructions. So th this is what the engineers do. In qualitative data analysis on the hand, it's much more about making sense of the data. So you have text, video, photographs, maybe some numbers, and you need to make sense of that and try to get to the causal processes that operate underlying your data and then explain those processes in a way that is clear and convincing to your readers. This is much more of an artistic challenge and there are no like ways that you can uh, go follow stepwise and then arrive into some kind of good result. In, com in contrast to quantitative research where generally no one is gonna criticize you heavily if you just apply regression analysis and do it correctly. So how do we actually do qualitative analysis? The first we need to take a look at the uh, research process. So this is the normal process according to Singleton and Straits which is used for quantitative data analysis or quantitative studies. So you start with research topic then you have a question that is a more specific uh, thing than a topic. Then you uh, prepare your research design, you design the study. Then you, uh, and here you have two important things. You need to decide what to measure and you need to decide what units to measure. So uh, this is a variable, this is our cases. We need to think what variables and what cases, where do we get those cases. Then you collect the data, you process the data, and then you analyze the data and interpret the result. So that's fairly straightforward. This is if you uh, ever have read about software engineering, this is kind of like a waterfall process that just goes from up to down. Qualitative data analysis is, or qualitative research is quite different because in qualitative research, we typically observe processes over time, or if we do a retrospective study, we have a chance of going back to those companies and ask for more information or go back to people and ask for more information. Qualitative data analysis looks more like this. So we have still research topic, we have research questions and we have research design and then we have some idea, initial idea of where do we go for data? Do we study organizations? Which organization we study? And we also have some idea on, on what we are going to measure. So let's say that we do a qualitative data study based on interviews. To uh, get started with an interview, for the first interview, you need to know who you interview and then you need to have some questions that you ask for from your interviewee. Then we go and collect data, but here things differ. So whereas in quantitative data analysis and quantitative projects, the measurement and sampling are basically decided here and then they are set to stone so you don't you can't really change them after afterwards so if you do a survey study for example after you have sent out the questionnaires you can't add more to those easily particularly if you do paper and pencil kind of surveys. In qualitative data analysis we typically have a rough idea of what we want to study but we don't have the specific theory in mind. So in qualitative data analysis we might have an, an, a rough idea that for example naming a woman as a CEO causes company to become more profitable. So that would be like an initial hypothesis that we have and then we go and study what do the women do differently from men to cause the profitability difference. And typically you need to iterate. So uh, we collect some data then we analyze the data, we come up with some initial theory on, on what may, might be going on. Then we uh, 
go around we realize that well we, we saw that women are actually socially more capable than men then we realize that we need more data about the social capability of the women CEOs and the male CEOs. Then we go back to the field and we collect more data. So we have this iteration of analysis and data collection. So when you, typically when we have multiple cases, let's say we have a six cases in a multiple case study, we start the analysis after the first case. So after the first interview, we, we analyze the data, we start to think what kind of, what could explain what this person tells me. And then uh, we refine the, the interview protocol. We may add more cases to the study and we iterate. We, so so we, uh, we go and we have more measures, we have more cases and uh, we could start from, for example, four cases and then in the final study we could have eight cases. So where do we stop? Because you can always find more companies or more people or more whatever you're observing, we stop when we realize that the final case that we added to our study did not really uh, give us any more information. So our, our idea of a theory did not update anymore after adding a case, then we know that we have obtained what is called theoretical saturation and then we finish the, the data collection and data analysis and then we write our report. So to understand qualitative data analysis you need to understand first that the research process differs. Whereas in quantitative data analysis you start with the data collection and then you proceed down to data analysis. You hardly ever go back to data collection. Sometimes you do but that's not very common and then you, uh, you work with what you have, you write your report. In qualitative data analysis the data analysis and the data collection, they go hand by hand and your data analysis guides your future data collection efforts so that both the, uh, the cases and the interview protocol or observation protocol are updated as you get more insights from the data that you analyze. So how do you then actually analyze the data? There are different ways to do that. Typically we, uh, we pick one of the leading scholars, for example, uh, Dennis Gioia, Kathleen Eisenhardt, Ang Langley, and we follow what those do. All these, these approaches have something in common though, and it is uh, called qualitative coding. So when we have 500, let's say 500 pages of interview transcripts and 100 pages of field notes from our, our interviews and our observations from the field, we can't publish that for two reasons. No one is going to read that, no one is going to make sense of that and the second reason is that it's typically confidential. So we need to summarize those 500 pages into some insights that our readers can then use or whoever is the consumer of our research results. And qualitative coding is the way how we do that. Understanding qualitative coding is perhaps easiest to uh, do by looking at an example. So this is a, a random interview of a random CEO found from the internet and I will demonstrate the principles of qualitative coding and by, by just going through how I could code this particular uh, small interview transcript. So this is, uh, I, I, if I remember correctly, this is the uh, old CEO of Caterpillar and uh, we are just going to code and extract meanings from what he says. So typically you go paragraph by paragraph or sentence by sentence and then uh, you, you start to think what does this guy mean. So uh, first of all the person says that this is a great company so we can uh, code that as pride. So the person is proud of his company. Then uh, he explains that the company has been around for a long time so there's long history 140 years. We don't need to know about the specifics so we kind of like increase the level of abstraction by coding and we seek to extract meaning from these sentences. The next thing that we note is that there are bad times. Then we go on and uh, we note that there is trust for the image that this company has and uh, there it is an American company. The, the person is proud of the American history of this company and uh, then uh, the company wants to grow internationally. So, so we, uh, we go through the data and we mark text, then we uh, extract meaning from that text 
And after we have gone through this initial, we call this open coding to get the first order categories in, from our data, we start to think like, okay, so do these things have anything in common? So are there any second order categories? So for example, uh, can, we, can we abstract these first order codes? We could, for example, say that uh, the heritage here, American heritage and, and long history, they, they could share something in common. So they could uh, indicate that this company gains its legitimacy through this long history of operating in the American markets. Then we could also code abstract categories, uh, for example, uh, that this company has a brand advantage because of trust for the image. So trust for the image is a more specific co uh, code than this more general that you have brand advantage. Once we have coded or combined these codes uh, into more abstract categories, this is sometimes referred to axial coding, then we start to think how do these uh, categories relate and that's part of what we call theorizing. So we could for example say that uh, we have this initial theory that if you have this, this long legitimacy through history, then that leads to brand advantage. So this company has a brand advantage because of their long history. And then we could say that, well, this uh, ha works in the context of international markets. So this is a bit of a silly example, but that's a general idea. You extract meaning from text on these first order categories. Then you have these more abstract second order categories and then you start to look at relationships. Of course, because this is a qualitative study, uh, we have to pay attention to two different things. One is that this is just an initial idea and then we have to iterate many, many times. If we have other cases that we study, if we have multiple case study, we have to check if the other cases uh, support this interpretation or if this is something that is just specific to this case or if this is something that we just uh, can't really support empirically. Another thing that we need to look at is uh, explanation of this process. So, so how exactly would this uh, legitimacy lead to brand advantage? Then we iterate many, many, many times. Nowadays, this process is typically supported by computer software. And the computer software has a couple of advantages over the older style of printing things out and then coding with a um, pencil and notebook. First of all, it can, you can automate something. So if you find that, for example, innovativeness is useful construct for your study, you can automatically search for innovation related terms from the data. Then it also keeps a track record of, of of how you infer different things. So you can look at your coding history and then if someone asks you uh, how did you come up with this theory then you can point to specific instances in your codebook. And uh, then finally quite often we have in quality studies the results are presented as tables and quotes or we support the results with tables and quotes that illustrate our data, then our qualitative data analysis software makes that easy to do and easier than if you were using just the old-fashioned pen and, and uh, notebook coding.